Good morning, everybody. Now we're back in San Bernardino again. Uh, Going to be stopping by the drop yard. I have an empty trailer with me right now, uh, and I was asked that I drop it and bobtail back over to Colton to pick up my reload. Uh, that's what I'll be doing is going right back to Colton for a pickup. But this time I know for sure I'm not going to be there for 14 hours because uh, my load is due for pickup this afternoon at 16.30 or whatever the hell that time was. Uh, sometime this afternoon, but I was told that the load's already ready to roll now. So, And, uh, and I was told to also bobtail over there because I guess we have too many trailers sitting over there. So... Uh, yeah, we're gonna make a quick stop at the drop yard, get rid of this trailer, and then we'll bobtail over the, uh, to the DC to pick up the load. Yeah. I'm gonna have, I won't have uh, dropping kind of stuff going on there, so it, might, it should be a little quicker, yeah, a little bit quicker process there. I still want to be careful not to make the video too long, and now that I uh, now I'm finding I have more than one reason to uh, not want to make the videos too excessively long in duration. And uh, yeah, that's because uh, uh, finding out that the file sizes are you know they start getting over four gigs in size. Uh, you know, if I get much more than a, like maybe about an hour or so. Uh, my, my pickup from yesterday that was also in Colton, I had to split it up into two pieces. Uh, I had either I had to decide either to split it into two pieces or uh, or post it at a lower resolution because uh, the output file was going to be uh, larger than four gigs, and uh, the last part of the video would uh, would have been cutting off, and I didn't want it to. So. I've got a bunch of traffic over there uh, coming up off the other side. Let's see if they'll let me over. Uh, yeah, I see this pickup. Uh, now, come on. Oof. Thank you. Speed up just so I can get out of their way. my four ways there. It's one thing that sucks about taking this particular route to the drop yard. Uh, I know a lot of our drivers like to take the 210 east over to uh, Del Rosa Avenue exit and take Del Rosa down. But uh, And the reason why I tend to not go that way myself is because it's uh, roughly the same distance going this way and uh, it's actually uh, yeah, tend to get more green lights going this way. If you take the Del Rosa route, it's uh, it's not the major artery. It's not the major artery. I'd say like Highland Avenue, Baseline Avenue, uh, Fifth, and uh, you yeah, know Fifth and all that are hurt. So uh, you're more likely to catch green lights uh, going the east-west roads here in town than you will on the north-south routes. All right, we're off on 5th Street now. Going to head east over to uh, Del Rosa and turn right onto Del Rosa. Uh, of course, you guys see a lot of my videos. You see me doing plenty of these drop yard videos. Now, we'll probably accelerate this a little bit, just uh, yeah, yeah, possibly. If I find that I need to to keep the video from being too long or taking too much file size, because uh, like I mentioned in previous videos, if I uh, oh yeah, Greyhound here. By the way, if you're wondering about yeah, the Greyhound station's right up here, uh, up the street on the left, and also the world's first McDonald's. Well, it's no longer there, but it used to be uh, right here on H Street. Uh, it was yeah. 14th and H, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, is where it was at. But I basically go, I follow that Greyhound bus up uh, up H right there, and uh, yeah, only about nine blocks up is where the the first McDonald's ever uh, uh, first opened up. All right, 
Like I say, uh, I was talking about earlier with the previous videos. Um, my SD cards and my tablet are all for the the storage on all of them are in, are formatted with uh, I think FAT32, so I can't do more than four gig file size before uh, it just kind of cuts off or corrupts the file, whatever. Uh, I need to have an NTFS file system to. Uh, I guess the file system part is kind of redundant because that's what NTFS means. It's uh, basically the Windows NT file system. That's the standard that kind of exists. I don't know why my tablet is formatted uh, in FAT32, but it is. And I don't know what I can actually change that. But such is life. We can, I mean, we can work with it. If I have to use, uh, you know, split the files into two uh, smaller pieces so they're, you know, in, in the situations where I need them to be, you know, hey, so, so be it. Just uh, kind of a more of a motivator for me to try to keep the, the video length down as well because with uh, my four camera views, it, uh, I, I wouldn't have thought that, uh, now, using picture in picture and all that, or sometimes switching camera angles and stuff, uh, you know, uh, from one to another, or whatever, that that would have really any impact on the the, the file size, because you still got, uh, you know, I still have the same uh, amount of video, especially at 19, uh, what's that, 1988 by 1080, or what, I forget that. It's basically 1080p, but the... You know, it's 10, 1080 pixels across and then 19, I want to say 88 or something like that going across, um, across or 1080 is going up from top to bottom. That's how many pixels that will fit in that space. So the smaller the pixels are, the more pixels you can get, and the more pixels you can get, the more vivid the video quality is. And, you know, my, my exterior cameras are both... Uh, those are both 720p video cameras, so I, I mean, the, the main exterior and the interior are both 1080p, but I've always ran 1080p, and it wasn't until I, um, I went over, because this light's going to end here after this next intersection. When I was run, uh, recording at, uh, oh, you know what, now that I think about it, maybe that's the problem. i got to check my project setting because I remember uh, when I was running 4K videos with the other camera, um, I tried to run as high quality as I could, but I had to step it down to, I uh, uh, forget, it's, I think 1600 and something or something. It, it was a lower number to, to get it to record less than 4K. But, uh, so I might have to double check that. Maybe that's why the videos are seemingly larger than uh, than I would expect them to be for a 1080p video. Alright, that's Waterman Avenue. Um, this FYI also, there's a, uh, there's a guy on YouTube, actually, I... I I didn't know about him until I just happened to be watching one of the Writing with Dave videos, and he mentioned him, and uh, yeah, a guy who lives here in town, he rides his motorcycle around, does uh, tours. What are you doing, dude? Oh, the traffic coming the other way is just not moving when they should be. Um, anyway, yeah, his name's uh, Baker X Derek. He's got some really interesting content. He basically uh, rides around the San Bernardino area, or uh, you know, actually he did one not long ago where he went to Colton in uh, Rialto. He even rode on uh, Agua Monza Road and uh, checked out the old cemetery over there. And uh, yeah, I mean, I know he was gonna be doing a video uh, post with his dad because his dad uh, I guess was coming into town from 
Texas or wherever. I, I want to say it was Texas. It could be wrong. Uh, he was going to be uh, taking him to the March Air Reserve, uh, March uh, Field Museum. So yeah, I don't know if he posted that yet. I don't. I just I tend to watch stuff when it shows up just in my uh, hey, this is what's on kind of thing, man. Yeah, and I, that's when I tend to see his content. Uh, but yeah, now I I spent most of my Air Force career working at March Air Reserve Base, and I was I was actually on the tow team myself that uh, put the C-141 over there when the, when it got retired. Yeah, it's aircraft 65-0257 that's over there, and uh, yeah, the, the head crew chief of that aircraft uh, I'm friends with, uh, he's also now a trucker. Uh, yeah, my friend, he lives in, uh, he, I used to, he used to also, actually he still lives in like the San Jacinto Hemet area like I used to do, and uh, uh, he, he's retired, he retired before I did, and he runs power only loads now with that, uh, for Amazon. Well, he, he runs for a local outfit in Riverside, but yeah, he does, yeah, basically he does power only loads uh, with Amazon. Yeah. Accidentally hit the mute button to uh, start playing my music again. All right, it's Del Rosa, by the way, coming up on Third Street. I uh, don't know if the light will stay green long enough for me. Not really the lane I want to be in. Attention, a new important message has arrived. All right, Tuesday morning at 9:50. What? You know, what are I? What? exactly is this? This we'll find out when we get to the drop yard, which is uh, very... Uh, damn it, what, did I, what am I doing? God, I'm stupid. I turned on Tibican here. I meant to turn on Del Rosa. I was like, this is, why am I at Rialto Avenue? And as soon as I saw that, I'm like, fuck. Yeah, that was a dumb move. That's, uh, this is the wrong street. Got kind of just caught up in talking, and I, I forgot to go one more light down, and, and this is not an easy uh, area to get turned back around because I can't hit the drop yard facing the. I can't hit the drop yard from the other direction. Yeah. So I can either go on one of the, uh, like maybe turn on to one of the other streets. I might cheat or something and uh, maybe back my trailer into somewhere or and get turned back around because I have to hit it from the southbound direction I can't I can't get into the drop yard from the northbound side this is right where I want to be for our drop yard but a good spot to try to turn around so no, I could always go by the airport and uh, come back up uh, come back across third now, the airport here is what used to be Norton Air Force Base oh I could have damn I could have turned right there there was a uh, And it used to be I could go straight ahead and go right past the terminal area, but it's uh, that's no longer doable. Found that out the hard way. Um, actually, you know what? I they, they rearranged this a little bit, so I think uh, if I remember right, I can make a. Uh, oh, you know what? I can do a U-turn up here. U-turn is legal here. Just let's see, is it wide enough for me? And, and, yeah, I don't 
don't know about that. Fuck it. Oh, there we go. We got a green arrow. So I almost do it legit now. Just because companies say it's uh, they don't want you doing the U-turns doesn't mean that it's illegal to do U-turns. It's a nice shot of an airplane taking off right there. Uh, look like an older, like a fire bomber. I don't know what kind though. It's uh, kind of looks like a DC-3 or something, but. The landing gear was already up, so I couldn't really get a good look if it was a DC-3 or something else, but it had the... No, it looks like a C-130 in a way, but when I went by, it didn't look like a 130. It was something else. It's got a high wing design. It's like, I think, four engines. Actually, from right here, it looks like a C-130. But when it went by, uh, when I watched it uh, going over the top of the building, it didn't look like a 130, it looked like something else. Now, mind you, I used to work on C-130s, so I know there's like certain uh, certain details that I'm looking for there. And, you know, from the rear, it looks very much like a C-130, but from the side, I could have sworn it was something else. Uh, I know for sure it was something else. That was not a C-130 nose. It looked more like a, like a DC-3 kind of nose. But DC-3s are low wing, not high wing, so... I don't know. I'm curious now what that what that bird was. I might have to get my... Uh, I have to see if I can get a, a close-up of it. I don't know if the camera picked it up. And uh, look it up, or maybe even ask my friend John, who uh, also is a trucker. Uh, used to be air traffic control and knows a whole bunch of different airplane types, uh, even more than I know. Or Jim Furman, I don't know if you're watching my channel right now. Uh, and Jim's one of them now, he's a friend of mine, he's a, he's a member of my TSP Facebook group. Uh, Jim is also an air traffic controller. Yeah, I imagine he might also know what that is, or what, what kind of aircraft it is, but yeah, I'm sure I can figure it out by uh, looking it up, but yeah, and, and again, never know. Or go on Flight Aware. I, I can just, yeah, I can always just go on Flight Aware and then look at this time frame, uh, 9.57 a.m. right now, and so just a couple minutes ago, uh, I can't see around this caliber collision enough, so... Oh shit, and the other guy. And the other freaking light turned green as soon as I started moving. Imagine that. Uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, I can always go on Flight Aware and look up the history, whatever, for a certain time frame. And look at like 9.55 or, or 10 o'clock or whatever and see what was flying around this area. And that would also tell me what kind of aircraft it was. Alright, so I, I PC'd down here from the house because I PC'd home last night. You know, I dropped my load and then I just went home to do my 10 hour break and then uh, so I had a legit reason to be PCing and then uh, for you guys, you guys who don't know, uh, when you're going from a home to a terminal location, like I'm doing right now, well, it's not really a terminal, but a drop yard, but going right back to the same spot I was at last night, uh, it's okay to PC right now doing this. So if you're a JCT driver, you're new to JCT, uh, uh, come on. Uh, it's good to know this information. You might, uh, yeah, because a lot of people are, when they are new to JCT, will have a, a little bit of a, of a paranoia about using personal uh, conveyance because the, uh, I know our logs people are hammering down a little bit harder on that. Uh, people are abusing it.
Dude, don't you go home? Huh? Don't you go home? Uh, I never go home, man. I <laughs> basically live here, honestly. Yeah, yeah, I live in Victorville. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm not bad off. But it's still the drive for the traffic out there. Oh. Bad off. Yeah, last night was horrible. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Because. Uh, uh, what's that? I was here last night at what, uh, seven something? Yeah, like seven, eight, no? yeah. yeah. weren't you working? Yeah, I was working last night, yeah. Yeah, I didn't, uh, yeah, even at like eight o'clock, I think I got home around eight or something like that, or yeah, no. That yeah, or no, I got home at eight thirty. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and it was like, it was at a dead stop there, uh, over uh, by where the truck bypass area is. Oh, yeah. And, uh, there was a broke down pickup in the lane next to me. And yeah, I ended up uh, pushing the trailer, uh, pushing the truck over to the the right shoulder, and yeah, you know, gotta get rid of them damn way stations and add more lanes, man. It's always like that. The place. It's nice. I mean, it's always a bit too freeway at times. It's horrible. Yeah. It has its days. I mean, it's better than the ten, but it's the ten. Those are even worse. Yeah, true. Those are like dead stops for sure, for sure. Yeah. Uh, this is empty again. They want me to bobtail, so. Is it dirty by something or not? No, it's still clean. Okay. Yeah. Alright, All right, man, take it easy. Alright, there's our thermal king guy here, and then, uh. I can see, uh. Min Su. Min Su is one of our local, uh, yard drivers. He's got his own truck. It's that uh, that KW, uh, that tan KW right there. You see hooked up to one of our trailers. Um, yeah, yeah. He actually drives for JCT, but of course he he has his own truck, and he's uh, he's one of uh, I think we got now ten local uh, ten drivers who drive out of the local yard here, and he's one of them. Now, when you come over here, when you're dropping an empty trailer, it needs to go on the north end of the lot if you uh, if there's room for it. Um, we'll wait for Estes to go by real quick. Because Estes needs to go into that yard, that same yard that I'm going to go into to set up my backing with. Don't don't try to nose into that area. We had a driver do that uh, what last week when I was here, and uh, he had a hard time getting turned back around because he didn't have enough room to get uh, to do a U-turn in there. There's more trailers sitting here than ever. There are more trailers here uh, than there were last night. Put it right in between seven one two three and uh, that five whatever number trailer. We're gonna point it right over here towards seven three four eight first. Get my tandems over there in that direction first. That way, when I start squeezing between those other two trailers, um, I'll have, I'll be in at a much straighter angle coming into there. So I'm gonna just walk it in now, chase it a little bit, get closer to seven three four eight. Now cut back the other way. Alright, straighten it out. Yeah, we're looking good there. Looking really good. Um, I can actually point a little bit more toward 5954, it looks like. And, yeah, I'll still, still won't have any problems with hitting the 7123, but. Alright, uh, yeah, looks good. Looks great. Seventy-nine degrees here now. I'm gonna have to take my hoodie off. It's funny how when you go up to the desert where I'm at, um, you go up to the desert where I'm at, it gets chilly in the day, in the mornings, and um, get down here though, it doesn't get chilly as easily. I mean, we have, I mean, they have their share day, uh, fair share of uh, cool and chilly 
mornings here, but it's uh, getting nice weather here today. 80 degrees. All right, let's see what that message was that came in. Okay, yeah, uh, that's what I figured. Um, okay, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but uh, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mention it for those of you guys who might be former JCT drivers and might be familiar with this person, but uh, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, uh, I'll go ahead and read it and uh, just Brace yourself um, if you're if you know much about JCT or yeah you might you probably already know the word by the time you see this but just in case go ahead and let you know unfortunately uh, it is with heavy heart that we confirm the passing of Jennifer Heisley uh, Jennifer was one of our DMs so probably the best uh, the best DM we have here uh, now I've uh, Anyway, Jennifer passed away last night following a vehicular accident in Tulsa. We have no information regarding services at this time. Once information has been finalized, it will be communicated. Thank you. Okay, and then this load is actually going to uh, actually going to Ocalada, Oklahoma, which uh, I have to go right past our terminal to get to. So uh, yeah, I'm planning on stopping by there, see how it goes. Um, very, uh, very uh, sad and unfortunate that happened to her. I can't believe uh, her of all people that that, that that kind of thing happened to. Now, I have a great rapport with my DM, and she's great herself. But then there's Jen, where yeah, no, there's no comparison to her. Um, Jen had over 60 trucks on her fleet. Uh, I tried in the past a couple of times to get on her fleet when my DMs they either quit or got fired or whatever and uh, was never able to get on her fleet her fleet uh, her board was always full and yeah every time I'm at the terminal uh, yeah I go in there uh, hey, bullshit with my DM or talk to the you know her or whoever I happen to have as a DM at the time and uh, yeah I never had Jen as a DM personally but I was she was like the one person in there I tended to always uh, chit chat, bullshit with, whatever, uh, when I was in that office. Uh, awesome person. Uh, she, used, she used to be a police officer. So she has like a real, uh, yeah, obviously uh, uh, awareness of uh, the situational awareness thing that, uh, that you don't really expect to have uh, to see from the, just your average person. and. To think that she of all people was involved in an accident not to mention how monumental her impact is on JCT as a whole it's it was just shocking to, uh, when I got the call last night about it uh, horrible uh, she had uh, all these yeah, she had a whole bunch of gifts at her at her desk from uh, from drivers uh, giving to her because she was so great uh, one of our drivers uh, yeah I know uh, I yeah, gave her uh, a chair, yeah, I was like a pink and black chair or something like that, if I remember right. Um, it's been a bit since I've been at the yard, but yeah, she uh, she got, basically got her like her own uh, special chair for that, and she'd always have like candy and stuff, uh, or, like uh, jars and things of candy, whatever. I'd always like bum off her and. Uh, while bullshitting with her and uh, Tyler. Tyler's our fleet manager who basically runs the, you know, oversees the, the DM area. Uh, he's all, he's a really good guy too. Uh, but uh, Jen, uh, let me say it's, I, I, I said it in our Facebook group this morning too after the word, the official word finally got out from uh, John Wayne Christner, which is Danny's son. Um, I said in that post that basically, uh, yeah, the NBA had uh, had uh, Kobe Bryant and JCT had their own version of Kobe, and that was Jennifer Heisley. Yeah, you know, and uh, that's how that's how monumental her impact is on this company, and how uh, how well liked and known she is here. It's like uh, you can be like me and just say some people don't like me, some people do. Uh, I, I, I have my quirks. I just I, I'll be the first to admit it. I'm not the not always the easiest guy to get along with. Um, it can be a, quite annoying for some people, but Jennifer, no, she was an awesome person in every way. Um, 
awesome worker, hard worker. She was regularly getting DM of the month every month. Uh, you know, I see our weekly, monthly newsletters, whatever, uh, that get put out. And it seemed like every month that she was either winning DM of the month or coming real close to it. And yeah, out of uh, probably like 10 or so DMs there, eight, 10 DMs, whatever we have in the office there, I can't remember, uh, regular day shift. Uh, it's just shocking, to say the least. Uh, it was a three-vehicle accident. Uh, one person died on the scene. Another one died in the hospital. Where, uh, well, the, the news article I saw said one person died, and the other one was sent to the hospital with critical injuries. But from what I understand, Jennifer was sent to the hospital, and she died while in the hospital. So I think it was a double fatality. Uh, very sad. Uh, Jen, we have eight hours and zero minutes of remaining drive time. Miss you dearly. I really hate to say the, these bad news about you to the people watching, but if you're, let's say, if, um, I I can't imagine what it's going to be like being the, whoever the DM is going to be who replaces her. Yeah, uh, you know, can you imagine someone sitting in that desk, yeah, working at that same terminal and all that, and. Uh, having uh, everybody else in that office judging you, hey, you're not Jen, you're not like, or you'll never measure up to what Jen was. Yeah, no matter how good you are, you're, you won't be Jen. Yeah, everybody loved Jen. I don't know anybody who didn't like her, so. Uh, yeah, and I always heard nothing but rave, uh, rave things about her from everybody, so. Yeah, a huge, huge impact, uh, unfortunately. All right, anyway, uh, I gotta try to keep the video length down and I already added to length by making the wrong turn so uh, I'm gonna have to plan on accelerating the footage when I'm going down Mill Street uh, pretty soon here uh, I'm gonna shut up and we'll try to keep the footage as uh, as quick as we can on this like I said try to keep it under an hour and keep the file size under four gigs right so uh, stay tuned and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll press on in a minute Alright guys, we're going to get out of here now. I had to uh, uh, log some pre-trip time here since i got to officially start my shift here. Let me drop my airbags. A little bit easier on this trailer, on the, uh, a little bit easier on the landing here, I mean. Get my sunglasses on while I'm waiting. Almost down to zero now. Alright, now we got zero PSI. Alright, now. Uh oh. Got another truck over there now. That's not Mincy, that's somebody else. That 3751A, eh? I think I just saw him the other day. Pretty sure I just saw that guy. Oh, it's 3757. Oh, that's LaVon Batista. going here. I meant to look and see if the trailer that I dropped last night is still here, but uh, I got fixated on his truck and uh, didn't look at the trailers until uh, it was already over all by him. She's just going to wave on through since I'm bobtail. Check anyway. Take it easy. And I saw this one earlier. Delta 4373. No, oh, he's in the seat now, but the curtains are still closed.
there. I've seen that truck before. Don't uh, I'm not familiar with it though, or him. All right, we're gonna make a right turn over here on Harry Shepard Boulevard. Harry Shepard Avenue, whatever I forget. Way or uh, sure, whatever. Boulevard, yeah, it is Boulevard. All right. Um, I didn't see. Uh, I never really looked up if uh, if Harry Shepard, if he was the same one who. Uh, I imagine he is. Uh, he's probably the same Shepard who Shepard Air Force Base was named after. Shepard Air Force Base in Wichita Falls, Texas. Um, kind of right by where US 287 and I 44 meet up. I actually went to Shepard myself for tech school training when I got out of basic training and went back there for uh, what we called seven level school. Alright, I'm going to make a left, uh, not this slide here, but the next one onto Tippecanoe and then a lot of our drivers will take Tippecanoe straight on down to I-10. I don't personally like to go that way because the uh, uh, the lights and traffic down there by Tippecanoe and Harriman or Tippecanoe and um, Hospitality or the um, uh, the IR and the I-10 West off ramp there, they're uh, it gets really uh, busy with traffic, and I don't I tend to try to avoid that area. I'll go through there in the middle of the night or something when there's when it's really quiet, but. Uh, when there's much going on at all, I'll, I'll usually avoid that way and I'll take uh, Mill over to uh, Inland Center Drive and get on the 215 south at Inland Center. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and uh, we get on to Mill Street. I'm going to accelerate the footage probably. Uh, again, I got to see what uh, what I'm dealing with when I'm actually video editing though, so uh, it may or may not actually accelerate, but if it does, uh, you'll be forewarned. Alright, this is Bill right here in front of the Stater Brothers DC, you fucker. Yeah, well, watch me stop anyway. It was still yellow. As long as any part of my truck's in the intersection before the light turns red, I'm legally in the intersection. That's actually how California law is written. Southbound 215. We'll be on uh, here for just one exit, and I'll be getting on uh, westbound I-10 from here. So what's that? That's not even a CHP there. Why is he hanging out right there? It's kind of looking like he's watching for people running the metering, the ramp meter lights, but the ramp meter lights aren't even on. Interesting.
in here. We're going to be using the Rancho Avenue exits. Which is uh, the third exit down. Most of you guys like to use Riverside Avenue. I prefer Rancho myself. Um, if you need a trailer wash out in the area, by the way, uh, if you're a JCT driver, the 910 truck stop, which is off the same exit as the Walmart DC, uh, Riverside Avenue. Uh, Riverside and Valley, which uh, Valley parallels I-10 on the north side of it. There's a truck wash right there, right on, right next to the off ramp uh, that you can use. That we actually have a washout contract with, so it's a good spot to get your washouts done if you need one. We also have washout services at our drop yard, although uh, sometimes they're not full time, and so sometimes you'll go over there. And depending on you know, how long all the trailers have been sitting there before you grab an empty. Uh, May or may not be clean. Alright, who's a shithead holding up the lane over here? Oh, it looks like all the traffic slow up here because of uh, construction. Don't have much choice on this though. Let's say our off our exit's coming right up anyway. Two degrees here. Right, got a truck using a shoulder over there on the on ramp. I gotta see if he's still there when I come back through after I'm done picking my load up. Hopefully, he won't be there. My uh, driver's side camera quit working again. Kind of looks like it. I don't see it on the screen. Yeah, it's a. Uh... connection problem here where it plugs in uh, on my rear view mirror. I'm going to have to fix that. Hopefully I don't have to replace the camera. Because it's, uh, I don't know if it's because it's kinked there on that end or, I mean, I'll, I'll have to use some zip ties and redo how it's hooked up or how it's uh, secured on there. Passengers camera was working, but I can't tell that doesn't look like the driver. I can't, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like it's only the one.
Wars. It's hard to slow down, Bobtail, because there's no weight to keep my tires firmly on the ground. Too much weight in the back of that pickup. To blow out your suspension on that thing. Good way to get pulled over for having unsafe equipment too. coming up here, or the, the drive facility here that I'm passing by, and then, of course, next slide down, Miguel Bustamante Parkway again. I see a JCT trailer here. Is that one of our tractors or... Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Lima 4387. Oh, there's a tumbleweed blowing across the road. I'm going to run it over too. Yeah! <laughs> uh, I, say, oh. I thought it might have still been on the front of my truck because I didn't see it in my rear view mirror. bit of a line here, not too bad. I see three trucks, uh, three or four trucks in the... Oh, one of them is a bobtail too. Alright guys, I think I got the camera working fine now. Hopefully it's recording. And I'm gonna go to yard move. I don't want to burn drive time on this. Should come on. Shipper, alright. Alright, so we're gonna go around to the 200 row and get checked in. It is ready to go. She just confirmed, which uh, I knew would be the case. So it should be pretty quick here. Ugh. 
ce nigga. GGS with Young's trailer, Stevens, DHN. Smart way, I see those guys every so often. Cargados. Got two of those guys here. No JCTs though. Whitehawk. And a couple other independents. AZ. He's out at the right time. BFC, BZFS, whatever. So a lot of private contractors coming in here. Carriers in here. Like smaller, whatever you want to call them. Carriers. Oh yeah, I see at least five JCTs right there in a row, and then another one uh, a little bit further down that are all ready to go. Uh, several more of ours are looking, uh, looking a little bit further down. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, I thought I saw a shag truck coming. I was looking in the mirror up there, and I, uh, yeah, I, I saw what looked like a shag truck. I couldn't tell that he had a trailer with him, but I could tell it was a shag truck coming. finish this. Alright, we're clear here. It's right on this guy, because I need to, uh, I'm going to try to line up over here by Prime, but kind of need the space he's using to get to his truck to do it. Alright, I will leave that spot right there open for somebody else. Guys, uh, I got my bills. Uh, let's change our status to yard move, uh, drop and hook, remark, and go find our trailer. We're looking for 6554. Uh, most likely be over in that same row that I was looking at earlier. There is a JCT trailer back over here, though, I saw. I don't think that would be it. No, that's not it. it Looks like it had a six on the end of it. A shag driver doing a pull up. That's not something you see every day. Alright, I see something over there, but I think it's a vehicle, like a, I think it's one of the maintenance vehicles, yeah. Thought it was the pickup belonging to these guys here. Another one over there, but uh, nope, not that one. Nope, not over there. There it is. Um, nah, I think it might be alright as long as Prime goes in the op uh, leaves to the right, like he's gonna go scale his load or something. Look like that might be a little bit fun for me to try to get the. Oh, no, it might be alright. I was wondering how I thought it might be a little difficult to get to the landing gear handle, but might not yeah. Oh 
don't think it'll be perfectly easy, but it doesn't look like it'll be as difficult as I thought it was going to be. Guys, we're all done pre tripping the trailer. Uh, I'm gonna go to yard move and scale and check out at shipper. Uh, I decided the tandem's also in the 40 foot mark, they were all the way up at 38 and a half, which, of course, they talk about. I don't like them that far forward. Unless I absolutely have to have them that far forward, I won't have them that far. So, I like to have at least some kind of uh, lid on how much tail swing I have on the trailer for backings. Less tail swing means there's less chance you can hit somebody when you're backing into a spot in between a couple other trucks or trailers, whatever. That's uh, actually about 100 pounds overweight. I don't, I'm not going to worry about 100 pounds over. It means I'm going to probably have to slide the tandems back forward again, if anything. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Yeah, definitely a front heavy load. I got 74060 or 08, yeah, 74, well, whichever. We'll say 74 1. That's where it's at right now. So, uh, not even 30,000 pounds on the tandems, but uh, I'm indicating uh, 30, a little, just over 34,000 on the on the drives. So I always slide the tandems a whole floor just to be sure. Uh, I'll go ahead and get off the property first. Shit, she's still trying to get in that spot. This prime driver was trying to get in that spot before uh, while well, I was getting ready to pull out of mine. And she was already most of the way in. Uh, this, I think this guy's trying to go through, so. Which way? Which way are you going? I wasn't sure which direction this guy is going, so I wanted to. Confirm which direction he was going to go before I made, uh, committed to making the turn myself. Alright. Well, all the way up here and get our trailer uh, doors right by her. Uh, Booth. Come on. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop here on uh, at the curb somewhere to, so I can send my departure call. I see a couple of JCTs here. One right over there. 
And this guy right here in front of us. L3509. Alright, I'm gonna I'll pull in between these two guys. Don't care about the fire extinguisher, it's uh, or fire hydrant, I mean whatever, it's not gonna be here long uh, more than uh, it takes to uh, Maybe slight tandems and uh, and send my departure info and we're out of here. I hate dealing with curves and uh, especially when I know there's a fire a fire hydrant nearby and. I'm afraid to get too close to the curb because the tail swing, I'm worried it's going to hit the fire, uh, fire hydrant. very far just want to go one hole and I'm good um, I, I'll even go through a weigh station with it over like over by 140 160 pounds I've done it before and they don't say anything at all about it not really worried double check where I'm at and we'll get out of here okay now we can get rolling I actually ended up moving it a foot instead of six inches. Back up a little bit, give me a little more room to get around this guy here. Okay, as a reminder, when you come here, if, uh, if you're doing a dropping hook pickup, or in my case, just a hook, uh, the preloaded trailers are going to have a yard seal on them. Go ahead and pull that, break that seal off, and inspect uh, how the trailer's arranged, and uh, put your load locks in as well while you're there. And then show up at the guard shack. Uh, don't don't put the real seal on yet. The guards will do that. Apparently, they're having a rash of problems. The driver's not put uh, not paying attention to that rule because they have a bunch of new signs up in the uh, shipping office now saying. Uh, do not put your seal on. The guard will do it for you. And I don't remember seeing those signs before, so it tells me they're constantly having problems with drivers uh, not listening. And either it's English speakers just not who don't listen to simple instructions, or maybe some people who have uh, you know, English language limitations of some sort. I don't know. anything though. Don't need to make racist comments about it. It's uh, like I say, there are plenty of English speakers uh, who don't listen for shit either, so I'm not going to make assumptions about that. Ah, we're just going to get back over to Interstate 10 and uh, get on 215 North. And then 15 north, uh, take it up to Barstow, and then get on I-40 eastbound at Barstow. Now, we'll take that route all the way across to Oklahoma City. And it'll take uh, I-44 up from Oklahoma City to Tulsa. And lastly, US-59 up from Tulsa to the receiver in Ocholata. Um, you guys have seen this route many times, and I already did this same route on the way in here, so I'm going to go ahead and end this. Uh, no sense adding a few extra needless minutes to the video. It's kind of a, this is what's going on, and I uh, kind of give you an idea. On, you know, if you haven't already seen my many, many Colton pickups, <laughs> it's, 
you know, uh, you at least have a, uh, a little bit better idea how things are done over here. Uh, I got plenty of other Colton content, so if, you, uh, if you're ever not quite sure, there's plenty of that uh, footage uh, available to watch. So you guys all have a great day. Um, I assume that I'll be delivering this myself. I don't know for sure, so chances are that'll be the next pickup or delivery deliver, uh, video you'll watch. Probably have, uh, might put one or two uh, miscellaneous type videos in there in between. So watch out for that kind of stuff. I do have some, uh, we'll have a separate G Wiz kind of uh, video for those of you guys who end up deciding to come to JCT because uh, it's a bit kind of a necessary evil. We'll talk more about that uh, later though. I'm not going to try to encourage everybody to come to JCT because uh, you got to make your own decision what's right for you or what, you know, what's going to work for your needs. And what's great for me might be shitty for you or what might be great for you might be shitty for me. So I can give you advice on that, on whether I think you might be a good fit possibly or maybe uh, you know, might have some shortcomings or something or what to expect, whether good or bad. Uh, if you're not already a JCT driver. And if you uh, if you do come to JCT, if you do come to JCT, uh, let me know, please. Especially if you end up using me as a referral, because I yeah I do appreciate the referral bonuses, but at the same time I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be a used car salesman and make money off you guys. Um, I say it's it's not about what I make uh, off of you coming here. It should be. Uh, I want you guys, if you're going to come here at all, be happy enough with the place to want to stay here. Yeah, and that's a uh, more reason also for if you're going to use me as a referral, I want to make sure that you have a good uh, first year here, or yeah, that you're that you like the place enough to stay more than just a month or two. Because I get a larger, I get more recruitment bonus bucks out of it. Uh, for every quarter you stay. Uh, after you hire on, uh, I get an extra 500 out of it. So, so uh, $500 for you doing your first trip, and another 500 for every quarter that you complete. So, obviously, if I, hey, if you're gonna take the time to refer, you know, use me as a referral, which I don't care if you do or not. To be honest with you, I'm not in it for the money. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not trying to get people to come to JCT for the money. Uh, Either way, uh, like I say, if you do come here, I want to make sure you uh, you don't have, uh, you have as few hiccups as you can, you as few problems, a uh, few mistakes as possible, whatever, and I'll give you a hand on that and help you out with uh, uh, making, them, uh, making the most that you can out of it. All right, so anyway, we're, getting, we're coming up on I-10 here. I'm going to go ahead and end it, and I'll talk more in depth on that whole topic in a separate video. Alright, you guys all have a great day, uh, and we'll see you hopefully in Ochilada.